Having a written legal will is important, but more than half of Aussie adults don't have one. Vision has entered into a partnership with SafeWill, a leading online will writing platform to provide you with an easier and more affordable way to write or update your will. As part of the Vision family, we want you to know about a way that you can write your will for free. Start the process now and complete it at no cost during Leave a Legacy Week from February 26 to March 3rd. See all the details at vision.org.au slash legacy. A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. This is Andrew McLennan. In light of recent events in Israel and the Middle East, today we have a very special guest who has experienced firsthand the brutality of Sharia law of a brutal Islamic regime that regards not the rights of the individual, the rights of women, the rights of minorities, and will do anything to maintain their grip on power. Mazie Amarizadeh from Iran was held captive in a prison and a book was published called Captive in Iran. And it's our pleasure to welcome Marzi to the program today. Marzi, welcome. Thank you so much. It's an honor for me to share my story on your platform. Uh, the honor is all ours, Marzi. Now, obviously, the whole world is now looking at Israel and at recent events. Tell us your perspective on what's happening in Israel now. Uh, you know, I grew up in Iran, and I have the experience of, um, you know, um, witnessing how the Islamic Republic regime brain, brainwashed children from a very young age at schools. And I remember they forced children every day to stand in the line and say, death to America, death to Israel. They forced them to... Uh, uh, mandatory mandatory demonstrations and to show to the world that how much you know uh, people of Iran supporting them and I remember um, they were showing uh, a series um, that um, trying to demonize Jews and they what they teach based on based on the Islamic um, teachings that um, Jews um, uh, are not human and they have to be eliminated from the face of the earth. They teach a map uh, at school without the map of Israel on it. And they intentionally do this and they um, plant hate in the hearts of um, uh, people from our childhood against our Jews, against uh, Christians. And I experienced that. As a child, I remember I had no idea where is Israel. Where is America? Why I have to say those things to um, those countries that I had no idea. That's a kind of, um, you know, brainwashing anti-Semitism. Um, so let me ask you, so, so Mazi, do you believe, so that was your experience in Iran. Do you believe there are other Islamic countries in the Middle East that the children are also experiencing this same level of indoctrination? I don't know that how much uh, you know about um, that the Islamic Republic regime started uh, under the umbrella of humanitarian um, purpose, and they established other other schools in other countries um, uh, with the name of you know um, uh, Islamic institutions, and they started a brainwashing in other Middle Eastern countries as well. Of course. This is their goal. Their um, their ideology is that that at the end time, it's Islam is going to dominate the whole world, and everyone should convert to Islam because they believe Islam is the perfect religion. So, when you first saw the reports of October seventh in Israel, the horrible atrocities committed against Jewish people, did it not surprise you in light of your upbringing and the hate that you had seen firsthand? When the attack is, uh, started, that really broke my heart that uh, the savage, barbaric behaviors of Hamas toward um, Israeli people, toward Jews. And I, I know this um, ideology. I know where it comes from. And uh, you know that they are the proxy of Islamic Republic regime. They have many uh, proxies and um, terrorists all around the Middle East 
that they use them um, to kill Jews. And as a, I was saying that their ideology is that at the end time, um, uh, for opening the path for their 12th Imam Mahdi for coming, uh, it starts with killing uh, and, and uh, annihilation of Israel, killing Jews and annihilation of Israel. And after that, it's um, Christians and other people who, in their eyes, are infidel. And based on Quran's words, they are going to give everyone a chance to convert to Islam. And if not, they have the right to kill people. So this is just the beginning. And when Hamas started um, raping women, killing children, and um, savage, it really broke my heart, honestly, whenever... Uh, every time I was reading the news, I couldn't stop crying because it was for me. I experienced all those things. Uh, I was witness to all those things in Iran and in prison. And that's why it was like a trauma to me to see such a horrible, barbaric, inhuman things are happening. Um, I believe a human being cannot do such a thing to another human being. They are evil. And I try to awaken uh, the word that the nature of these people is evil, and you can't negotiate with evil. You can't have any business, any deal, or peace with evil. The yeah. only solution is to eradicate um, these evil people, and the head of this evil is in Iran, that Iranians are fighting against them for many years, they're saying no to this regime. They are asking the Western countries to stand with them. They don't expect the Americans or Western countries to go to Iran to fight for them. They are just saying, stop supporting these terrorists. When American government sent billions of dollars to Iran, that was a foolish policy, yeah. giving billions of dollars to terrorists and say that this is for humanitarian purpose. We all know that they are not going to use it for any humanitarian purpose. Any money that people support Hamas, uh, support uh, Palestinians, that money don't, uh, will not go to Palestinians. It all goes to Hamas to get more arms and to do uh, such violent um, behaviors. Yeah. Well, I think even mainstream media now is admitting that the Hamas attacks were funded and sponsored and supported by Iran and that the Iranian regime has definitely got blood on its hands here. Marzi, it's not even a secret or a conspiracy theory, and, and you're right. It's a proxy war. Iran is waging a war against Israel. So in that sense, yeah, you weren't surprised by what happened. Yeah, that really makes me angry when they say that um, the Islamic Republic regime um, uh, was not behind this attack, but everyone, even even if you ask a five year or ch child in Iran, they will tell you that this is uh, from the regime. Everyone knows that um, the Islamic Republic regime support Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis, um, all these um, uh, terrorists are uh, their proxies, yeah. and they are funding them, supporting them, training them. And we should stop, the West should stop uh, supporting these terrorists, sending uh, billions of money to them. It's foolish. I was in prison in 2009, and Obama, uh, it was a, during a green movement that people uh, came to the streets, they protest against um, election fraud. And I was witness how many people got arrested and sent to prison. They were tortured, and uh, some of my Cellmates who were working in prison for years, they told me in cries, in uh, tears, that they were witness to pool, a pool full of dead um, uh, body of uh, young people. So at that time, Obama made the same mistake, and he sent billions of um, uh, dollars to the regime, which made Iranians very disappointed uh, with this ridiculous uh, foreign policy toward Iran. And uh, they wanted to have a negotiation over a uh, nuclear deal. This is uh, foolish. You can't have any deal, as I mentioned, with evil people. The only solution is um, uh, to eradicate um, terrorists. The only um, language that they understand is a strong language, not weak language. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting you say that because there's a lot of naivety 
in the West. And when I say naivety, I think there are people who like to think that if they're nice to others, that others will be nice back to them. And it works a little bit in the West, but we only have to look at the history of Western civilization that in the 1930s, the Western powers thought that by being nice to Adolf Hitler and reasoning with him and giving him what he asked for, that he would also live in peace. And of course, they learned a harsh lesson that the more they gave in to Hitler, the more he wanted. And I think some of the more left-leaning politicians in the West have the same mindset now that if they're nice to these regimes, that the regimes will be nice back to them. But it's not looking that way, is it? You can't be nice with evil. Because if you uh, be nice, if you act weak, they will come back. They are not going to stop. And everyone, I always um, encourage, especially Christians, the churches, it's the time to stand with Israel to eradicate these uh, terrorists. And especially, as I mentioned, uh, the the Iranian regime, the Islamic Republic regime, they are the head of this snake. And we need to cut this head forever. And I suppose for our audience listening all across Australia right now, Marzi, I guess the greatest thing we can do is we can pray, can't we? We can pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We can pray that God's hand will be upon that nation right now. But also pray for the terrorists because the Apostle Paul was a terrorist. He was a Christian killer. He put Christians in prison and he met Jesus on that road to Damascus. And even in the Iranian regime and even in the terrorist organizations, we see the son of one of the founders of Hamas is now Christian. He's very vocal on social media and in the mainstream media. So I guess for our Christian friends across Australia listening to you right now, Marzi, we can pray, can't we, for God's will to be done, for salvation to come, even to these hard hearts, these these twisted, bitter hearts, that Jesus would reveal himself to them just like he re- revealed himself to you. Yeah, that, you're right, God. Um, we have a loving God that give opportunity, chance to everyone uh, to repent and come back to him. And that reminds me a dream that I had in prison. I was praying to God, complaining when I was witness to the torture of people. I told him, why you don't finish this uh, cruel people? And in a dream, he directly talked to me. He said, I'm giving these people chance to repent. But if not, I'm going to destroy them all. So definitely we pray that God open their eyes to repent. But uh, that doesn't mean that God's justice is not going to, uh, to happen. Amen. And it's the time for God's justice. And God's justice is coming for those people if they do not repent. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, Marzi, I just want to thank you again for your time today and for sharing a little bit of your story and your perspective on what's happening on the Middle East. I also want to direct people towards your website and it's marzisjourney.com. That's M-A-R-Z-I-S journey.com. Through that website, you can connect to Marzi. You can see what God is doing in her life now. God's using her all around the world. She's based in the United States, and she's got an amazing story to tell. She's written a book recently called A Love Journey with God, which is well worth a read, worth buying and having a read. Marzi, thank you so much for your time today and sharing your perspective on the events in the Middle East. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.